Hi, everybody. March 13, 2021. Let's do some weather. Weather. The wicked weather. Oh, boy. Well, first, let me start with something rather strange. Look at Texas. Look at this. This was on the 12th of March. It was at 10.20 or 10... 10, 12 a.m. Check it out. Wow. Now, that looks very strange. Is that a cloud? Oh. Our satellite and radar sure does show us an awful lot of strange, should we call them anomalies? Anomalies are very, 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 very rare happening. So, no. We shouldn't call it an anomaly. All right, check this out. Wow, now that's cool, huh? Mother Nature sure has upped her game, hasn't she? All right, what is this? A puzzle piece down here? Texas into Mexico? Really? Okay, but... Uh, 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 something weird is happening. Something very weird is happening. This cloud does not seem to be moving any further. Well, on the 12th, Texas, you got a lot of microwaving. Or you had a lot of microwaving. Wow. Yep. So, right in this area, you're now experiencing, or have been experiencing, severe weather. Tornadoes. Hail. Uh, severe storms. Look at this. It ain't real. But this this couldn't be any better. If anybody thinks that that's a cloud created by Mother Nature, you are. You are not right, as they say in the South. You ain't right. Look how perfectly lined up that baby is. So let me show you. Um, this is up just a little bit north Oklahoma, Kansas. Yeah, things aren't aren't really very good. This is now real time. And look at how lined up that baby is. Now that's quite the storm and that right angled edge. And we've got a lot of plasma creation with microwaves and oof, what's happening in Nebraska? That's very strange because this very severe storm right here is, well, it seems to be evaporating quite quickly. But look at this, okay? This is a telltale sign that this is not natural. The right angles, the defined lined storms, the severity of the storm that's, well, Nicely lined up. Oh, I just wish people would check out weather modification. Look at all of the frequencies up here or down here. All right. Um, I want to show you what the satellite looked like earlier. And 
and it was really only about an hour ago. Let's see. The 13th. Whoa. Okay. When I see something like this, when I see the severe storms popping up in a nice line, I know we've got man's hand in it. And sure enough, look at all of the microwaves. Look at, look at this. I mean, oh, it's so obvious. All right. See all of these perfect circular patterns. High frequencies being emitted from our Doppler radar stations. High frequencies, they emit into the ionosphere, they push up the ionosphere, and they uh, release the frequencies. The ionosphere comes woof, down real fast, shooting off extremely low frequencies, and they can create weather, earthquakes, hurricanes, all, all kinds of stuff. But these straight lines, extremely low frequencies, they can steer, they can steer weather um, patterns, they can steer, they can um, intensify storms. And all of the straight lines are extremely low frequencies, the circular pattern high frequencies. So what's happening right now? Well, Texas just got hit with tornadoes. Some farm buildings got damaged from what I hear, from what I've read, nobody has been injured. It's really, it's kind of, it, it, man, things are just pathetic. People are pathetic. All one has to do is just do a little bit of research to understand that man is controlling the weather. Sev uh, several reports of tornadoes and hail damage was reported a tornado by a tornado near Happy, Texas. Sure, they're happy. Power lines down, cell tower down, one house was damaged, but, but the family was in the basement. Oh, RVs topple over. Two tornadoes, twin tornadoes, Canyon, Texas, 3, 3.33 p.m. Did this Kara actually write that? Wow. Major damage on I-27. We've got an awful lot of Gwen Towers that emit extremely low frequencies into the atmosphere or through the ground. And that's why we see an awful lot of damage around our interstates. The toppling of semis and happy Texas. Yeah, I'm sure they're happy. Okay, how about California? Lots of mud. It's gonna be a lot of work to dig it out. Sound like a thunderstorm, and um, yeah, smashed the fence over there and came in between the houses. Unfortunately, my, my renter next door, his car is buried in the mud. The labor that it takes to dig this mud out is, is incredible. So it's all got to be done by hand, and, and 
if you shove that shovel in, it's like rock. It's all rock and mud. So, a lot of work. A lot of work indeed. Indeed. Silverado. Well, you guys, first off, I can tell you about seven minutes or so ago, it started pouring here in Silverado Canyon. And just a few minutes ago, then we started to see hail. That's the second time we've seen that here today. There is a mandatory evacuation order here in place. The roadblock is right behind me here. The only way to get up into the canyon is to walk. Now, earlier today, there was a big mudslide just about a mile up the canyon, there were about a half dozen cars that were inundated with mud and about uh, nine homes had mud flow through them. When the sky opened up about a quarter of seven this morning in Silverado Canyon, part of the burned hillside came down. This is what it looked like as a small creek on Anderson Way became a raging river the debris in this video was Rich Pfeiffer's shed. It came down in a wall of water, and my shed went first, and that the shed floated down to here, broke up, and part of it's here, part of it's down on Grundy. Um, and then that pickup truck slid into my car, pushed mine into the creek, and then it followed into the creek, but it pushed my car a little bit up, so the tow truck was able to get it out. Not far up the canyon, a mudslide covered the main road, making it impassable. Several feet of sludge piled up on driveways, overrunning sandbags and storm barriers. Two Teslas and a high-performance Mercedes were stuck in the middle of it all. Living out here in the canyon, it's kind of a hazard that we accept, um, but having to go through the rigmarole of, of digging out your home is, is never something that one wants to do or dreams of doing, but here we are. Orange County. Why would anybody live in an area where they come to expect this? It's a hazard. It's a hazard that... I don't get it. All right. Santa Rosa. Rosa. The roads look like they're covered in snow, but that's all hail. It created some dangerous conditions along 101. This video was taken after fire crews responded to multiple spinouts and crashes. The pea-sized hail looked like this. It reported throughout the North Bay this morning. This is along 101 at River Road in Windsor. It was a big surprise for some locals. Well, uh, the hail is just too much. It's crazy. I've never, ever seen something like this. Ever, ever. It's a lot. It's nice. It's a nice view. It's dangerous. You can see the freeways. A lot of accidents. Even down here, there was an accident down the road here. And it was loud. The South Bay also seeing plenty of hail. Check out the video from San Jose. The storm dumped a healthy amount of that pebble-sized hail. And the highest peaks even saw some snow here in the Bay Area. Chopper 5 flying over Mount Diablo this afternoon. Got a light dusting of snow. We've also... What's going on? Bizarre, isn't it? Well, this is what's going on right now. The major storm bringing near blizzard conditions, possible tornadoes, and flash flooding. In Colorado, they're bracing for at least one to four feet of snow. The governor there has activated the National Guard to help with potential search and rescue efforts. Hundreds of flights have been canceled because of that storm, and state health officials say vaccinations have been postponed for more than 10,000 people. And as the storm moved in, people rushed to food banks in Denver, opened up extra homeless shelters. Rob Marciano is in Denver this morning where the city could see one of its biggest storms on record. Rob, good morning to you. Hey, good morning, Whit. Good morning to you. Uh, we are looking at potentially the biggest snowstorm since at least 2003. They are taking this seriously. They've already activated the National Guard because in this sort of situation, people can get stranded on the roadways. We proved that already this year, so this is a storm to be taken seriously. A very dynamic, impactful storm already across the southwest, and already tornadoes from this uh, uh, wind-driven event in shallow water Texas. This is one of three tornadoes across the uh, uh, Texas panhandle. Very close up view here. Some farm buildings being torn apart by this. Nobody hurt, thankfully. 
Valley. On the cold side of this, we are looking at the uh, snows in Vegas and Southern California. Here's video out of Flagstaff, Arizona, a foot of snow there, and that's all coming this way. So a myriad of watches and warnings are posted. Winter storm warnings, blizzard warnings up now for Wyoming and parts of Nebraska. Flood watches as well, and high wind alerts too. Timing it out, the snows will get going here later on today and amplif amplify tonight and tomorrow. Flooding rains across parts of the east, and this thing stays with us. A long duration event, wind and snow through the day on Sunday, weakening somewhat as we go through a Monday, and it presses off to the east. But one to two feet of heavy wet snow here in the Denver area, two to four feet along the I-25 corridor. That in many spots will be a crippling snow event, not to mention the severe weather threat. More on that in just a bit. Eva? I-25, Interstate 25. Oh, they're going to be getting two to four feet around the interstate. Interesting. Interesting. Argentina. Oh, mira las casas, loco. Parece que tiraron una bomba acá, güey. Bueno, esto se ve de mi casa. They're going to burn us out, just hit us with tornadoes, flood us out, just this, what is going on, man, is really on a daily basis now, all over the world, uh, whole cities, whole towns being taken out. This, this snowstorm in Canada. Oh, this was January 19.
Is this the kind of snow that you get in Canada and St. John's area and uh, Newfoundland? This is, well, the flooding, Malaysia. <laughs> Cars underwater now is just a common a common occurrence, but Ecuador, there was a volcano that erupted and this entire city covered in ash. I hope it's not anywhere near my subscriber that moved to Ecuador, Indonesia. The flooding taking place over and over and over again in the same areas is really, wow, I, I don't understand why people aren't asking questions. <laughs> Spain, Spain, southern Spain.
coches, tú. Son las... I mean, it's, you know, maybe people don't understand that what's happening in their area is happening all over the world at pretty much the same exact time. That is kind of um, strange. It does beg questions. At least it should beg questions. Malaysia, Indonesia, over and over and over again. Thousands upon thousands have lost their homes, and a whole lot of people have died in the last 48 hours. Oh, ini pesen lagi ah, dah goyak dah. Wah, dah bagi tahu dah. Ah, ah, itu dia. This is a woman's, a woman's house in Brazil. Mãe de Deus, gente, eu tô apavorada. Olha o jeito que tá a minha casa. Olha o jeito, a geladeira já tá boiando, meu carro já tá boiando, tá tudo boiando. Eu nem sei o que que eu vou fazer. Alguém me diz o que que eu, o que que se faz nesse caso aqui, pelo amor de Deus, que eu tô apavorada. This is uh, an area that has been hit over and over and over again, just even within the last couple of months. São Paulo, Brazil, it's been hit over and over. You know, oh, I guess people will just think it's climate change. It's climate change. 
massive destruction due to climate change, which, if that was true, if what they say about climate change, the global warming, the CO2, was actually true, then all of this, uh, we would see incremental changes, not radical, drastic changes happening all over the world at exactly the same time. Massive amounts of flooding and it just wouldn't happen that way. So even that should you know, just raise eyebrows like, okay, this this seems kind of odd that climate change would bring about this kind of destruction all of a sudden. All of a sudden. Well, if you do have a brain and it actually, you know, questions things, then uh, perhaps take a look at weather modification. And um, this Brazil, t okay, tornado, tornado in Brazil. Yes, I have a playlist, Weather Modification, and oh, I have over 200 videos on weather modification. And several of those videos, I show how easy it is for man to create tornadoes. All one need do is just hmm, have an open mind. Check it out. Brazil. <laughs> Fine, fine, it's climate change. Peru. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Bolivia. Aquí en el Mercurio, Antonio Mercurio, granizada. Yeah, Hawaii. It's not. This is not. This is not. This happens in a matter of minutes, before, like it's to my waist, it's to my chest, and next thing you know, I see icebox passing me, coolers. In fact, when I went to try and get the dog, I only could take two steps, and I could feel him pushing me already, so I had to turn around and come back. And I thought I lost the dog, but somehow he made it up on this roof. I started panicking, my dad started panicking, we just was watching everything kind of go by and then maybe within 15 to 20 minutes the water just rose to the top. Hawaii got hit hard. At least a half dozen homes on Maui were either heavily damaged or destroyed, including one on Waikina Loop in Haiku. The Alexander family is now picking up the pieces after losing everything. Our Lauren Day joins us from Haiku now, Maui. Uh, Lauren, what's the situation there? Yeah, good evening, Joe. I'm standing in front of a reservoir in Haiku. Local residents tell me 36 hours ago, this was completely dry. At one point, it was full. The damage from all this heavy rainfall has just been heartbreaking. I mean, there are few words to describe the devastation that I saw today. People's homes destroyed within a matter of minutes. I spoke with one local family that lost everything. The homeowner telling me this was by far the worst flooding he's seen in decades. Dangerous water quickly devouring this home on Waikina Loop in a matter of minutes. And I just sat on in the middle of the road in the pouring rain and just cry like, oh my God, like, it's just, like what do I do? You, 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 there's nothing you can do. 
Mark Alexander says he is still in disbelief. It just happened so fast. I couldn't, next thing you know, it's to my waist. And then it's to my chest. All of it got swept away. All of it got swept away. Just watching it run down, just run down. It's going to end. My son's truck that was parked right here, that's now somewhere down there up against a tree. To give you an idea of how high the water rose, I'm five feet, four inches tall. You can see the water line there marked by the mud. That is a number of feet above my head. Mark's son, Sean, says the hardest part is seeing his father's hard work get washed away. You know, I was just thinking about my dad because my dad has worked so hard to build this property the way it is. What matters most, the Alexander family is safe, including their family dog, Legend, who was stuck in a kennel but miraculously managed to get out. I tried to go and get him, but the water, when I stepped into the water, it, it, it was just too strong. I don't know. People are being destroyed. Being destroyed. This is a state senator in Hawaii. I live about a mile and a half away from uh, where your reporter is right now. So I, I live close to the area, but just outside of the inundation zone. So by the time I got home, there was just uh, all I witnessed was a lot of traffic. And um, the local stream, Poamoho stream near my house was, uh, was flowing, but not um, anything, anything special at that time. And, about dusk. And Senator, what's the latest on the situation in terms of closures and any help right now available for residents? You know, I'll be working on that um, um, all morning, obviously. I'll be in touch with the community leaders, the, the, the schools, uh, all, all the agencies up and down um, the coastline, the state and uh, county emergency service. I'll be in touch with them this morning and seeing uh, where I can fit into it. Blah, 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 blah. Ecuador. Centro Comercial La Rotonda Ciudadela Alborada, vea. Nothing we can do about it. Just, what? Witness it. Watch it. 
people are dying, the non-human species drowning, killed, murdered, businesses destroyed, homes destroyed, people left homeless all over the world, and there's nothing we can do about it because we have way too many people who think that rolling their eyes and calling people conspiracy theorists when they even when they have not even checked out weather modification and they think that they're just so brilliant they won't check it out my god we're going to just continue to see more and more of this and it's going to escalate and escalate because all of the agendas they are wow ramping up real fast so who gets destroyed tomorrow will it be you will it be all those people who roll their eyes call you names conspiracy theorists they think that they're so unbelievable that they act so smug and they will not check out weather modification when it's so obvious that man is controlling it nope okay pisses me off really pisses me off